In this video, we're going to continue modeling our Ferrari 308 using Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at creating the lower portion of our Ferrari 308. We're going to start doing this at the door line because it's going to be the easiest for us. But we want to take a look at a couple different options. There are some things that we need to be aware of, and some of those are going to be the fact that we have a wheel well to contend with. We've got a couple of creases, and on the Ferrari itself, there is a pretty apparent midline. And if we take a look at this, it's kind of hard to see, but the midline is actually uh, recessed in, and then it comes back out. Now, this, you know, this feature that we're going to have to model um, it could be difficult. It's something that likely is going to be easier to just model the body without it and then cut it out later. But I want to take a look at the, you know, potentially two different methods or ways in which we can do this. So the first thing that I want to do is, is I'm going to start by just selecting three edges. Uh, and, and as always, you guys can download this data set from the description in the video or carry on with your own if you are following along. But I wanna take some of these edges and I'm a, apparently I'm gonna you know come back and fix these later, but I'm, I'm gonna avoid them for now because I think they're gonna cause problems. But I'm gonna take this edge. I'm gonna do this from the front, even though we can't see it. I'm gonna go into edit form and I'm gonna hold down Alt and Control and simply drag it back. Now when I do that, I'm extruding the edge, but I'm doing it with a crease. Now you can see that we've made that edge and I'm doing it with a crease. Now I'm gonna use Alt and Control again. I'm gonna drag it down. And again, what we're doing is we're extruding this with a crease. Once again, this can be really hard to do because it's in the middle of the body. So we can always come back and adjust it after the extrude and get it to be roughly the size of the feature on the blueprint. So I'm gonna bring this down. That looks bigger than I think it should be, but that's what it looks like on the blueprint. And then the next thing that we need to do is just extrude it back forward again with that crease. So Alt to Control and then pull that forward. And again, we can uh, modify this. It's probably gonna be best to do this from a bottom view because the body line uh, is gonna obscure some of it, but if we zoom in, we'll have a little bit finer resolution here. And we can always use this as well, but keep in mind that it's, um, it's going to be moving planar, which means an X and in an Y, uh, the way that we're looking at this now. Okay, so now that we have that line, we need to extrude it one more time down and one more crease. Now, this is where it gets tricky because we're gonna to have to control the curvature. So I'm gonna bring the canvas back and I'm gonna hold Alt and Control again and I'm gonna pull this down to about, in this image, there's uh, what looks like a side skirt, but it's actually a sill. And on the car itself, it appears to be all very consistent curvature. So um, it doesn't flare out or anything there. So this gives us, uh, you know, pretty much what we're doing is we're taking the body line down to there. One thing you'll notice is we've done this in one section. And by doing it in one section, it means that we're not really able to control the curvature very well. So what I mean by that is if we pull this in and we go to a smooth display, um, what we're gonna see is that it's straight. And it's straight because there's a crease here and it's simply moving straight down. With that edge still selected, I'm gonna go to insert edge and put it right at 50%. Then I'm gonna double click that edge use edit form and simply pull that edge out. This we can do from the front because we haven't designed the rest of the body yet. Now notice the, the front and the back, if we bring the front and the hide the back, this looks quite a bit lower than what we see for the front of the car. Now that's typically what you would see when you look at this from the side, the door section is quite a bit lower than we see for the front and the rear. There's this approach and uh, departure angles. It's typically what it's called in off-roading, but generally they're just showing you that these flare up and uh, the, the midline here is actually pretty low on the car. It's well below the center line of the wheel. So when we look at this from the front, we have to sort of guess or estimate where this curvature needs to be. 
Now, if it's gonna be fairly gradual and then start tapering closer to the bottom, we would bring this edge down. Uh, if it's going to be pretty consistent, we can put it somewhere in the middle. I think just based on pictures that it rolls pretty far underneath the car. So I, I think that it, it stays pretty consistent down to that point. So when we look at this from the side, that's looking pretty good so far, but we need to build out the rest of the wheel wells. So the wheel wells, again, they're going to be tricky because we still have to deal with this gap and this crease, and then we need to carry that curvature down. And we've also got this wheel well here, which doesn't really need the crease. The crease sort of um, comes and it ends here, and then the rest of the wheel well is built. Now, thankfully, with Fusion 360 and T-splines, we can have a T-point here, which will allow us to bring that geometry forward. We don't really have a good way to sweep this forward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select these edges and I'm actually going to select these edges as well and bring them forward and then modify their curvature. Now I'm gonna do this just with Alt and doing it just with Alt will, will make, sure, make sure that we have curvature continuity. Um, the creases are already in there so I don't need to worry about them. I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit and I'm gonna do this again one more time here for the fender flare. I don't know if I need that edge or not, but I wanna make sure that I have it. So now that I've built that, we're gonna use weld vertices. So we need to go into modify weld vertices. We'll bring this one up to here and we'll bring this one up to here. Now, when I did that, you'll instantly notice a problem. Now, we have to use maintain creased edge when we do this. So let's do control Z to undo or hit cancel and let's try again. So if we go to weld vertices, make sure we select maintain creased edge first, we'll come to here and then we'll take this one to here. Now we've maintained that creased edge, all right? So we've carried that geometry forward. We're gonna say, okay, view this from the side. I'm gonna go into box display and then I wanna go to modify edit form. Now I need to bring some of this geometry back. And there are a couple ways that we can do this. I'm gonna select these two faces and I'm gonna to try to scale them. When I do that, you'll notice that it's scaling just that face and it's actually pulling it in quite a bit. So it's not gonna give us a good result. What we can do, however, is we can select some of these faces and then we can just simply move them back instead of scaling them. So I'm gonna pull this back might actually even rotate it to try to match the curvature. And then I'm gonna take probably this vertex and I'm gonna bring this vertex back and then I'll bring this one back as well. We're not quite there yet, but this edge here, uh, this one actually needs to come back as well. And again, I'm looking to keep a fairly consistent line between the geometry. Now there are a lot of vertices in here because that's inside of that little gap. So we're gonna make sure that we box select and move them, and then we'll move this one back. And then we can take this one, move it back. When we have a blueprint to follow, it gives us a nice reference line, and uh, it helps us you know, sort of make the curvature work. Keeping in mind that we are still in box display mode. If we go to smooth display, you notice that this doesn't really, doesn't really follow the wheel. So we don't have the curvature that we need in this area, which means that we probably need to make some adjustments. Also, this edge here probably needs to go up. And this edge here, probably even this entire face, but I'm gonna grab that edge. And I wanna push that up. Double clicking the mouse wheel will get us back to fit. And I wanna make sure that this stays um, roughly horizontal. That crease, I want that crease to stay horizontal. So it's looking pretty good so far. Let's hide the canvas. Let's hide our edge display. And you can see that we've, we've sort of carried that shape down in the front. Now, when we look at the actual car, it might be hard to see, when we look at the actual car, the lip on the fender sort of stops at that midline and then this is all a smooth transition. So we don't really have to worry too much about carrying any um, hard transition below there. So that means that what we should do is we should make sure that this crease wasn't actually carried down. And it wasn't, and the reason it wasn't is because we took this edge and extruded it forward rather than taking this creased edge and extruding it down. We probably need to do some work to fill in this area. Um, and the way that we can do that, again, is just extruding. So 
Alt and Control, and I'll extrude it back once. I'll do it again. The second time, you don't need Control because we don't need the crease uh, in the middle. And then again, we have to decide what we're going to do uh, actually with getting that uh, that T point to happen right in the middle. Uh, but this will allow us to you know move these vertices around and make this more of um, you know a pretty square patch on the inside. And then we can uh, sort of handle or deal with this crease here. So let's rotate this around and note that these vertices um, are not in here. So we can either take this vertex and we can uh, merge these together or we can add an edge inside there to control it. So if I do insert point and I just select that edge and say okay, what I've done is I've added that T point here. So if I go to modify and weld vertices, I now have a vertex that I can I can add to or I can join those two together. And I can do the same thing on the bottom as well. So insert point we've typically used to create an edge, but it does allow us to just break that edge up. And then modify, weld vertices, bring that one over here. And now we can use edit form, we can, um, or we can actually use bridge. We haven't used bridge, so let's go ahead and try that. Bridge will allow us to select these two edges for side one, these two for side two, and we want to make sure the number of faces is only one. And that's because we have a single face here. If you want, you can turn on a preview, and then we can say, uh, okay, and see what we get. When we do that, uh, it obviously produces some problems. Let's go to box display, and let's make sure that this edge is creased. So we want to make sure that edge has a nice crease on it. And then if we go back to smooth display, that should have uh, sorted itself out. So the T-point leaves some ugly geometry in here. It's not really a big deal, but if we are worried about the way the fender well looks, we can always create a triangle there um, to help sort it out. We can do the same thing down here. Nobody's gonna see these. They'll be black in any renders or images, but if you're concerned about it, we can sort of triangulate that, or we can use the utilities and repair body and see if there's a better way to solve that. Um, sometimes they'll end up being star points, even though it's a T or it looks like a T. So if you want to try the utilities, you can just simply go to repair body, select it, and you'll notice that there's sort of this red line here. And um, those are error stars. And if we click them and let Fusion try to repair it, uh, then it is able to, to sort of fix that and give us a little bit cleaner look. It's not perfect, but it gets us pretty close. So this is the exact same process that we're gonna follow for the back as well. So we'll show the canvas, I'm gonna rotate this around. We're gonna use modify, edit form. We wanna select all the edges that we wanna extrude. Remember when we're extruding edges, the creases will go with it. So anything that we have here will we'll follow. And remember also that we are trying to match the number of faces. So I'm gonna hold down alt I'm gonna drag this one forward just a little bit. I'm gonna let go and do it again. And then we'll say, um, cl just click in the canvas somewhere. Go back to box display mode because it's gonna be a lot easier to deal with. Rotate it around. If you have trouble, always just make sure that you turn the canvases off. Sometimes they can be a real pain to see. And then we'll go into weld vertices. So I wanna bring this one forward. And then I wanna bring this one forward as well. Remembering that we don't have anything for this to attach to just yet. Uh, all we're really trying to do is bridge that stuff on top and then we'll worry about the inside of the fender. If we go back to smooth display, go back to a right side view, bring back our canvases, uh, and really we're working just in the side, so I'm gonna hide the front and the top for now. And then notice that it doesn't look like it lines up, but that's only because this vertex um, is just inset here. So even though the patches don't look like they line up, everything is fine. But we want to use modify and edit form, and again in box display, and just simply move some of these. So I'm going to bring that entire section forward. Likely want to move this up. I'm going to allow it to flare out as it gets closer, but I want to make sure that it's not too drastic. And then this one needs to obviously come forward to try to match the curvature. And then we can bring this in as well. If we wanna tighten this up, 
Remember also, if you're grabbing any vertices like this one where it is on that crease, you might wanna use box select and that'll grab everything that's sort of underneath it. It might be hiding behind something. Everything looks pretty good. Um, smooth display looks okay. And there's obviously more that we could do. But the benefit here is that we took the majority of the body in the middle and we brought it down. And then we worked on the flared out sections individually because those were gonna cause problems if we were to extrude because of these creases. We didn't really want those creases to survive. Um, and then from here, of course, we'll take this um, Alt Control and then we're gonna extrude it back once. And then we're gonna do it again with Alt without Control because uh, again, we don't need the crease on the second one. This edge here does not need a crease. We'll bring that forward. And then we can bridge these two together. And then we can um, also add that T point. So we're gonna, we're gonna split this up. We'll say, okay, we'll repeat the process. We'll split this one up, say, okay. And then we'll go in to weld those vertices together. Uh, at this point, if you are not comfortable with rotating and moving the model around, then that's something that you really need to get comfortable with. Now, it's pretty easy in Fusion 360 compared to some other software, but um, you definitely want to make sure that you spend the time to learn how to do that. So it will, it will certainly help you if you get good control over uh, the various things that we need to do here. And again, this edge needs to be creased. That's why it looks like it does. We're going to just go back and add a crease. And there we go. So that looks pretty good. If we go to the right again, hide our canvases, we're gonna turn off our edges. We have a pretty good representation of the midpoint of our Ferrari body. Now, again, I did mention that this was not really an ideal way to model something like this. Um, would really be better to just carry the body down and cut that out later with surfacing tools, but the point of this is for us to learn how to use the form tool. So if there is a way to do it, we're gonna to try to explore it. I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Um, this is obviously a whole lot easier than the WRX model was with all the creases and fender flares and so on. Um, so hopefully you guys are getting some enjoyment out of this and are progressing and, and having a good time. If you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.